This is one of my favorite projects. We're going to do a stop motion animation using Google Slides. So let's start with the final product. This is an example of one that I've done. So let's just take a look at this um, stop motion animation. Okay, there you go. So the first thing I want to show you is exactly how animation really is. So if you can see this final product, you're going to notice that I have a lot of slides. I have 35 different slides. And what's happened is every time I have a slide, I have created an added moved, done something different on every single slide. So you can see that all I've done is made a new slide and added something and moved my image. Okay. That's all it is. That's what animation is, is that for every slide, you're going to do something new on the next one. Now we're going to be using a lot of different things in this, in this lesson. So here are some major things we're going to learn how to do. We're going to learn how to duplicate using control D. We're also going to make sure that we know how to arrange different elements of our presentation like they're stacked like a stack of piece of paper and we're going to make sure we arrange them in the right way. Also, we're going to learn how to crop different images. That means just make only show parts of the actual image. And then you're going to be you could be searching for images if you'd like to use something outside of what I'm using. And you can even draw a line like I have done here. I'll show you how to do that. And you can of course change the layout. If you don't want to use my background, you can just choose blank and choose a different layout. And then we're going to also learn how to share and publish this to the web and that's going to make it a loop. So those are the different things that we'll be doing today. So let's first talk about the things I told you that we're going to do is the first thing is learn how to duplicate. So when you duplicate, all you have to do, so I wanted to change and make this slide a little different, is here's the first skill you're going to need, is click on this over here on the left and press Control and D for duplicate, and then it will create a new slide right under okay. it. And then that's when you're going to be able to move your image, whatever you're going to be animating, you can move that, whether it's animating an object like a like an airplane or you're adding a letter. So that's all you have to do for that one is control D is for duplicate. The next thing that might be really important for you is that you might need to be able to put things on top of each other. So we have this tree here. I have an airplane and I also have a text box for my my phrase. And I got the text box by just clicking here and then I just drew it out right there and you can start typing and add your text. That's how I got my text box there. But if you want to arrange to make sure that like sometimes when I first started this, like I put my airplane on first before I had my tree. And so then my tree, every time I wanted to move my airplane, I couldn't move my airplane. So all you have to do to arrange things is click on whatever you want. So maybe I want my tree now in front of my airplane, which I don't, but I'm going to demonstrate. You click on it, go up to arrange and then order. And if I want to bring it to the front, now my air, my tree is in front of my airplane. Do you guys see that? Okay, it's in front of my airplane. I don't want it in front though. I do want it to go back. So I'm going to press order again and send backwards. And now my tree is part of, my tree is, is behind the, the airplane. Okay, that's what we need to do there. And also maybe I want to make sure that text box is not behind the tree. It's in front of the tree. So I'm going to press the, my text box here, click arrange, order, and bring to front. And now my text box is in front of the tree. So that's another thing that you might need to learn how to do. Another thing that you want to do, you might need to be able to crop an image. So if we have an image and maybe you're going to go and you're going to add an image of something, I'm going to search the web and I already have something up like this dog. Maybe I just want one of these animals here. So I'm just going to press insert and you can see I have a lot of animals, but I just want one of them. So let me show you how you can choose just one of them. So here we have this. Let's say I want this duck right here in the middle. So now I'm going to either double click until you get the line around the edges and then you can see the hard corners and the hard sides or I could click on it and then press this right here where it says crop, not, the, not beside it, this one where it says crop. And these black different hard lines, if I bring these down and I bring this one up so it's right under that duck and then I bring this on the side in 
there and I bring this on the side and then I press enter. Now I only have that duck. Now if I clicked on it again, you can see all of them are still there, but I've cropped them out. So I've taken them out and said, this is that duck. And now look what I can do. I can make that duck bigger. It's still, I mean, I can do everything I want. So that is something that maybe you want to do something like that, or you have a picture and you want to just only show a little bit at a time, and that might be your animation. So you could actually use cropping as a way to do your animation. So that is an idea. And also when we're searching for something, you can for an image, you can press search the web and you can look for something over here. Just make sure that you're asking for a transparent background. The reason why you want a transparent background, because if you want, if you have this background image here and you wanted to do something like this right here and you press insert, the background, even though it should be transparent because those gray and white squares represent transparent, but it actually did not come through transparent. So now when you move this dog around, it's getting in the way of everything else versus how this looks. It does have a transparent background and you can move it and it's not going to cover up anything else. Like you can still see things around it, even though it's inside the box, right? See the, the surroundings. So that means this image is really taking up that whole space but the background of this image is transparent so you can actually see things behind it where this one you could not. So it's really important when you're searching that you add transparent background. All right, another thing is if you want to draw a line, a pathway, maybe it'll be easier for you to draw a line. You can draw lines and draw different things into your Google slide by clicking right here beside this right here. And usually it might just show this line right here, but choose scribble. And when you choose scribble, you can write using your mouse, just left click on that mouse, and then you can control the weight of that. And you can even control if it's a dash and the endings are here. So you can make a line and do whatever you want. If you don't like it though, when you highlight it, press delete. If you'd like, you can just go ahead and use mine, airplane and my tree and all that you can I'm giving you. Or you could use your own creativity and use the method that I'm showing you to create your own Google slide animation. Now this background has been set. It's actually been set as a layout. So if you don't want this background, all you'd have to do is go to layout and then now you're able to go and choose your own background by either changing the color or you could also choose an image by coming here and searching for an image within Google. So that will pop up in a little bit. If you want to use the background that I've given, you can just go to layout and use that one. Okay, so first off, I like to work backwards when I do my stop motion animation. I like to know what my final product is going to look like. So this is what I want my final product to look like. Now, the rectangle here is what is going to be actually visible when we fought finalize our presentation. So again, we want to start with our final project and this is what we want it to look like. So what I want to do is we're starting right here with just a blank slide without the pathway and without the airplane on the screen. But I'm going to go here and I'm going to press Control D. Okay, that is for duplicate. So I'm making sure that this over here is highlighted. I don't want to have anything on the slide selected. I just want to select the actual slide on the left hand side. I'm going to press Control D and you can see that that has created the slide. So now this number three is going to be my last slide and we're going to be using a lot of slides for this presentation because basically what happens is we're going to make the image, the picture look one way and then we're duplicating and we're going to move part of it and we'll duplicate and move part of it again and we're just going to keep making it a little piece by little piece like a cartoon. Okay, so here we go. Here is that second slide. So what I want to do now is I want to take off all of the letters except for the first letter. So I'm going to put my shift key here and I'm going to go here and I'm just going to highlight that and press delete. So now I only have the F for the beginning of our phrase, follow your dreams. Now I also want to take this airplane and I want to take it to the beginning of my path. Okay, so I want it right here. And that is how I want my first slide to be. Now, here is my pathway. I'm not going to delete it yet. OK, 
Okay, so right now, if you're going to follow mine and do this one, this is what I'm going to do. Now I'm going to press Control, make sure everything is selected over here, press Control D. Okay, now here's my first slide. Now I can go back and I can delete this path because I don't want the pathway showing it. So I'm going to highlight it and press Delete or Backspace. Now I'm going to go to my second slide and I'm going to click here and add. Make sure I just move my cursor to after the F and I put an O for follow. And then I'm going to go now and I go and I am going to move my mouse up the pathway. Okay? That's all we need to do for now. So now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make sure everything over here is selected. Press Control D for duplicate. I'm going to come here. I'm going to add an L. And then I'm also going to move my airplane on here just a little bit. And I'm going to turn it right up here to make sure the ending here, the tail of my airplane, is following that dotted line path. Okay? So now if I were to look at it from the beginning and I walk through my slide, let's take a look. That's what it looks like now. The next thing I do is I go back to number four and I'm going to slide number four, press control D, and I'm going to take this right here and do L, and then I'm going to move my airplane along the path. And again, I'm going to turn it and adjust it where the tail is on that dotted line. I'm ready for my next one, control D, and I'm going to add the O and then move this along the path. We want to look at it really quickly. We just go back to number one and you can see how we're animating our slide so far. So what you would do is you would keep doing this all the way to the end and this airplane is just going to follow the pathway. So I have gone ahead and I have finished all of my animation. So let's just go ahead and look through this. I'm going to use my arrow key and just walk through. And all I did was press Control D and just moved my airplane and added letters as it went. Okay, and that is my project completed. And we want to show and share this to the web and actually create that loop to make it an animation that just keeps moving and you don't have to click through the presentation. Because right now, I could press slideshow, which is how I showed it to you at the beginning, and I can just use my arrow keys and I can look at this. But it's, I'm having to press it each and every time to make it go and then it stops. Okay, and then it's over. But I want to make an animation that will loop. So this is how we do it. We're going to go all the way back to the top slide. And then once we're here, we're going to go to File. And we're going to hover over where it says Share. Then we have two options to share with others or, or to publish to the web. And I want you to publish to the web. So when you click Publish to the web, it's, we're going to say, right now, the smallest that you can make it is every three seconds, but let's do every second. And then I also want you to press Start Slideshow here, and then restart the slideshow after the last slide. Okay, so we want to press both of those, and we're going to press Publish. Then press OK. All right, now... Here we go. When we have this, I'm going to press Control C. It's already in blue. Press Control C. Come up and let's get a new tab open so we can Control V as in victory or an arrow pointing down. This is where we want it. And then you see this is it. But before you press enter, I want you to erase this 1000. Okay, because that stands for one second. We want it a quarter of a second, so we want it to erase that after stop before you get to the equals and put 250 for 250. And then I'm going to press enter. So that step is really important because if you don't do that, it's going your animation is going to lag and going to be pretty slow. So let's just click that. And now it starts and it's doing it all on its own, like hands off. I'm not doing anything. And then because we also click that it starts on its own and then it also loops. Now it's just gonna keep going over and over and over and it's repeating. 
Okay, also, when you are finished and you have that link and you have made your stop motion animation project and you have the link here, we want to be able to see it. So if you are in my class, what you're going to do is you're going to go to the Google Classroom and get that link where it says Padlet and you are going to be able to post it and share just like these students have posted and shared these from the past. So all you have to do is when you come on here, go to the bottom where you see the plus sign and when you hover over it, it changes to a pencil. You're just going to press Control V and then it is going to take a little bit of time, but it will pop up here. And once you do that, you're going to press publish. And then your stop motion animation will be right here so people can see it. So that is going to be the stop motion animation project and it will go ahead and start. So people are going to be able to see everything you've done. So I hope you've enjoyed your project. Get started again. This is going to take a couple of class lessons with me if you're watching it with me in class. And I cannot wait to see your creativity come into action.